Welcome back, I'm Shane and this is Relative Time. Today we're going to take a look at a watch that should really make you question what kind of value Seiko brings to the table these days. The watch in question is the McCurr Ocean Master Vintage Turtle Homage, and as the name suggests, it is a turtle homage. Yet as far as I can tell, it's not an homage of any specific reference. Rather, it seems to be a combination of the classic Captain Willard of the 70s and a modern turtle. More to the point, however, is that these offer upgrades beyond what you'd get with a standard turtle, such as a nice domed sapphire crystal and either ceramic or sapphire bezel depending on the colorway. So maybe in some ways these are more of a super homage rather than an homage. Now in full disclosure, McCurr gave me this watch to review, and I don't think they're going to ask for it back. So that's why the promotional tag is up. Now retail price on these is currently $229 but after a discount code they gave me, it brings it down to 189. And that's a heck of a lot of bang for your buck considering what you're getting here. But let's take a closer look and you can see for yourselves. So from what I can tell, the case is more or less inspired by the classic Captain Willard. Well, the dial is more of a mixture of that and a modern turtle. So it's 44 millimeters wide without and 46 millimeters wide when you include the crown and the crown guards which actually makes it about a millimeter bigger than the current Captain Willard reissues, yet still one millimeter smaller than the current Turtles. Now you still have the same 47 millimeter lug to lug, but the McCurr is going to be one millimeter thicker at 14.3, which is all thanks to the domed crystal as well as a slightly taller bezel. Now 14 millimeters is still pretty manageable, but that's probably my biggest complaint against the watch. Although, I think it is a pretty fair trade-off considering what you're getting. Rounding out the specs, you have a 22mm lug width, 300 meters of water resistance, and a Seiko NH35A movement. Now, if you've ever worn a turtle, you'll know exactly what to expect when you put this on your wrist. Even though they're a little larger, that shorter lug to lug and the curvy cushion case, well, it makes them strangely comfortable on the wrist. And I say strangely because you don't really expect it to feel this good. So that's exactly the case we have here, and here you can see it on my 7 inch wrist. And I'd say that because this is a little bit smaller, I think it's a little bit more comfortable than my Dark Knight Turtle. The finishing of the case is good, the only rough or sharp edges are the bottom of the crown guards, as well as the knurling on the crown, which you'd actually expect. The top of the case has a circular brushing, highlighting and focusing your eyes right on the bezel and the dial whereas the curvy sides are very polished, as well as there's a fairly narrow polished chamfered edge acting as a border between the two areas. Now, one of my personal pet peeves is that this kind of finish on the side always seems to attract a lot of fingerprints, as well as micro scratches over time, which is partially why I prefer brush sides on my watches, but this is typical and expected of this type of watch. The back of the case is also brushed, but it's more of a linear brushing, as well as you can see they went with an embossed custom case back, or a really nice touch. Now the crown is screwed down, but it's not exactly signed. Instead there's a directional arrow telling you which way it locks, which is kind of a nice nod to the original Captain Willard. Another cool feature of the McCurr is that they added a red ring around the sleeve, which when you see it lets you know that the crown isn't fully screwed in. So far I haven't seen anyone else do this, but it's a really cool touch I like. Although one thing I don't like, but it is typical with the Captain Willards, is the top, more extended crown guard. Compared to the modern turtle where it's much smaller, I find it much more difficult to unscrew and use the crown here. One thing I want to point out here is that between the lugs the case is rather flat. The reason I want to point this out is that because of this, I don't think any of the third party turtle bracelets out there will fit this watch. So you're either stuck with a strap or a bracelet with a flat end link. Which leads us to the bezel. Now on this particular version, they're following the black and orange color scheme with a sapphire covered insert, which should lead to some increased scratch resistance over time. Now the bezel here is a little taller and the grooved edges are a little deeper than you would normally expect, which winds up making it much easier to get a hold of and use. Plus the action itself is great and honestly better than most Seikos I've run across. There's a great tactile feel and sound as it rotates with just a small amount of back play. Now as for the crystal, I believe it's a single dome sapphire, but I'm not sure if there's any AR coating on it. Yet with that vibrant orange and black color scheme underneath it, I never had any problems making out the dial. 
So when McCurr asked if I wanted to review this, they didn't ask what colorway I wanted to see. Rather, they just offered to send this orange one, which is a little bit different, but I'm really glad in the end that they did, as I don't have anything else quite like it. But if you want something maybe a bit more conservative, there are a few other colorways, and the gradient blue or green look particularly good. The overall dial design is part Willard, part Turtle, with just a pinch of McCurr's own styling. The larger cardinal indices at the 12, 6, and 9 are more Willard, while the other rounded indices are from a turtle. And all of those indices are applied with a metallic border and then filled with white luminous paint. And they all have a decent amount of height to them, which also includes the border for the date at the 3. Now, beyond those indices, you have a standard raised chapter ring in black. And for those wondering, it is aligned. Now, where McCurr starts to shake things up a little bit is with the handset. On this colorway, they are a jet black, and I think they look fantastic against the orange backdrop. In macro, they do look a little bit fuzzy, but in person, they look great, and the hands are probably my favorite part of this watch. The second hand and minute hand are pretty similar to a turtle's, but the minute hand is split into two parts, whereas the hour hand is a little bit wider and segmented even further, giving it almost a little bit of a cathedral hand kind of feel. And in that jet black coloring, it's something I really like. What I don't like, however, is the massive amount of space taken up by the text on the dial. And there are particularly two things I really don't like. The first is the professional tag. I've said it before and I'll say it again. Professional what? It really doesn't mean anything, so why is it there? Then way down at the bottom, I have no idea why this is here. Especially that caliber 611 which might even be an Omega reference, so no idea why this is here. The logo itself is also a little bit odd. Now, I'm okay with the style, and it is applied, which is nice, but it has this brushed texture, and it really changes depending on the angle and the light you're looking at it, which I think winds up being more of a distraction than anything else. Now, to be fair, that really is a bit of a nitpick. And as a whole, I think this is excellently executed. I'm not sure an orange dialed watch is going to be for everyone, but I do like that it's a bit different. And that high vis color scheme is always easy to make out and read, as well as signal for help if you ever get lost in the ocean. Let's move on to the loom, and the loom is good. It's nice and bright, and that segmented hand is extra cool. One disappointment, however, is that only the first 20 minutes of the bezel are loomed up but it's still an improvement over a single pip. In terms of longevity, my biggest concern was how does this compare to a turtle? So I put it up against that and a baby turtle I recently got. Now the loom color is a little bit more green than blue, but as you can see, it lasts just as long as my dark night. Although one interesting thing here is that smaller baby turtle lasts the longest. Now, one thing to note is that there isn't a lot of clearance between the spring bar and the case. So if you try to use some thicker straps, you might have an issue. And that's kind of the case with the stock strap here. The strap itself is really good, and they actually sell it separately for like 60 or 70 bucks, which is kind of ridiculous for what it is, but it is really good. It's a waffle style rubber strap and maybe one of the better ones I've run across. It's flexible, comfortable, and quick release with this really jumbo sized buckle that's kind of hard to miss. The problem with the strap is that it's not made for this watch, and they use it on a variety of others. So it does fit, but it's kind of jammed up in there. It doesn't fully rotate, and it's sort of stuck where the quick release bar is facing the case. Now, ultimately, this really isn't a problem when wearing it. As I said, it's really comfortable, and I never had any concern that it was going to pop out or anything. But it is kind of apparent that it's not really supposed to be here. And even though it is quick release, you're going to need a tool in order to pop it out and put it back in, as you can't reach that quick release with your finger. Now, as a whole, I think this is an excellent and well-executed homage, with some nice upgrades, as well as a few cool custom touches by McCurr. And as such, the positives and negatives with the design are going to be what you'd expect with this kind of watch, which is mainly that proportionally speaking, you're going to get a rather small dial for its size and a lot more case to show off instead. And that's at least compared to some other watches that have a more streamlined case. Some will absolutely love this, and that's why some people keep coming back and buying cushion cases, whereas some prefer a more streamlined case and prefer to keep focus on the dial, which is usually what I prefer, but you might be different. 
One thing I really do like about this watch is how they combine the Willard and Turtle designs. And in some ways, they may have put together the best of both worlds, as I personally prefer the Turtle's dial and handset. Yet I do like that slightly smaller Willard case, as it is a little bit more comfortable. So at $189 after discount code, you're getting a heck of a lot for your money here. And if you've ever been curious about a Turtle or a cushion style case, but never taken that leap, then this is one I would definitely check out. But what do you think about this Makura Turtle homage? Let me know down below. Or if you can think of someone else that's doing it better, mention that as well. And as always, if you enjoyed the video, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Till next time.